Yo, what's up, guys? You're on me, Tree Boy for Life. I just wanted to show you something. I had a um, recent comment. You know, like I said, guys, I've been still been busy, been working. I just hadn't had a lot of time to post videos, but I'm going to show you my setup for what I have right now. Um, I, I'm very basic. It's nothing out of the ordinary. And um, this is a crispy ash tree. I mean, you can see it's just, I don't know what in the world. It's right over the deck, two-story house, practically three stories because of how it's built up on the foundation. You can see how high the deck is up off the porch. But I'm gonna back it up here so you can see what we got going on today. It's not the biggest thing, but it's crispy everywhere up there. So you just don't know what you get into when you get up there. I mean, bark's already falling off the tree. So that's always a danger. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. And like, look at this deck, it's all wobbly, but yeah. I mean, nothing crazy, but you know, we'll see when we get up there. Just to run the risk anytime, all especially after rain, limb snapping on you. But I use basic spikes, guys. Um, these are old Buckingham um, spikes with balsam pads. Um, I think I got them off another set, and I've been using these for years. I mean, years. Um, I can't even tell you how long I had those. I can't even remember. Probably all my all my tree career, I pretty much had those spikes. I don't, so I don't do nothing fancy. I probably need to replace them, but I wear long johns and extra socks, so I'm good there. So I hardly ever have to worry about that. I wear my Weaver Cougar saddle, the WC700, um, which is what that runs. Um, um, I was running this um, Corona Pony saw like type of situation. And this is still one of my most favorite saws, but it's it's got a screw loose. So what I've done, I replaced it with a, um, so basically I use a silky, which is like a little, it's like a little stump cutting, cutting um, silk, silky. It ain't nothing, you know, nothing spectacular. Oh yeah, there we go, I can, can read it there. I'll ship it, you can see what it is. But yeah, that's what I'm running. So I, I'll just slide that in there for a little hand saw, you know. It is what it is. Um, you can kind of see up there on the porch, I got my battery charging for my saw, but I'll show you that here in a little while. But what I'm running, I got um, Dynaglod, um, which is used to be New England, which is now Tuffle Burger. I'm running that as far as throw line, I use buckets. Buckets are so much easier. My guy Brian down at Vermeer here in Greensboro, North Carolina, turned me on to the bucket. Ever since then, I've just been amazed by it. No more bags, I just, and then what I do, I can put my whole climbing system and my bag, which I'm climbing on um, Poison Ivy from Yale Cordage, um, Petzl. Um, I think this is a notch carabiner. Oh no, it's DMM, I'm sorry, DMM. Of course, you know, you gotta have the hitch climber pulley nowadays. I mean, I used to start off, you know, guys, I start off with the basic, got the B-line here with the Grizzly Sprice, uh, or the stone stitch. Um, and that's kind of old, guys. So it's just been a little while. Um, and you know, you kind of see this kind of falling apart, but. But I've been climbing this rope for some time now. This is um, probably the last new rope that I bought as far as climbing line is concerned. But that's my climbing step. I mean, it's very basic. I'm still, I, I, I don't use a lot of mechanical um, hitches, although I do have some mechanical things. And I'll show you that here in a second. All right. So that's my climbing line setup. Um, and I'm going to show you one more thing, guys. I like, of course, I got my porter wrap set up because you see how the deck is open here. And this is another thing about staging your site. The deck is open, so I got so the rope can go out that way, and the guy will be safe. He'll be out there. He don't have to be hanging over the deck or rope over on this side. And the porter wrap is what um, like I said, Michael Kidd made this for me years ago here off of eBay. So it was really cool. I still have it. I had it welded one time. I had my buddy weld it one time because I broke it. But other than that, I just, that's just where I used the homemade porter wrap. So nothing again, nothing spectacular. It's nothing extra. Just simple. But what I've done. In this leader, I basically got my rope up there and I do a lot of natural crotch um, cause it's easier for time's sake. And then over here, I got my rigging because my thoughts is like this. Okay, guys, um, if I got my backside of my rope shooting out off the deck and got one guy, he can easily everything since it's got to come over the deck anyway, there's no way around this situation. Everything's coming down. So I figured for the most part, and I have another rope I'll be using. I'll show you that in a second. But most of this stuff is just coming down right over here. So it'll be coming right down this side. And so it's smooth selling. So I just threw the throw rope over the tree, kind of like a a, a a single line setup or SRS and MRS. I can't never remember. Yeah, SRS and rope system. Um, whatever that new way of saying it is, I can never remember. But that's what I'm using. So again, we'll have that in the porter wrap back here and everything a, a drop right here.
but oh yeah let me get back to the climbing setup so i have a a rappel ring on my um harness that i use and i've been using with the webbing bridge because they switched the rope bridge to the webbing webbing has been great that web bridge is actually pretty new because i replaced it um, although it looks terrible um i have the rock exotica rope grab i've been using this forever and a day um of course pets so carabiners the amds um twist lock and screw lock um um which is amazing now i had spliced this but for some reason dum dum cut it somewhere and i had to or i don't know if i could splice this in. i can't remember if i spliced this in. i only spliced one end on this i'm sorry so i spliced this up years ago but this is a, this is my my main lane which is about 10 to 15 foot but then this is what i'm using just some little um yale like almost like some m steel like the, the cord is just for a little chainsaw lane because again i don't I don't have nothing fancy and I got some more stuff coming. I'll show you in a couple, maybe a couple days. I'll shoot a video and send it out. But, um, this is my favorite little device here. I use the, um, what's this called here? The Brilliant. So this is my mechanical device. So it's this dubs as a secondary climbing line and also as a secondary lanyard. And it's super long. It's about 20, 25 foot if the last time I checked. Um, so it gives me a very good radius to be able to, I mean, I can throw crotches 10 foot up to reposition my line and then reposition my climbing line. So again, guys, this is just something that I do. Um, of course, I have this too. Ralph, being the B2B that's down in Texas, had made this for me, um, this ring to ring, and I got a couple carabiners on there. Like I said, nothing fancy, guys. Just an old harness, old situation. Dude, I'm gonna walk over here. So I just got my tail in my line here. Now this is a um, this is the Yale XTC. Um, I want to say Yale, I forget it's called a Blaze or whatever, but long story short, this is just the orange. I, I love the orange because it's safety line. You can see it at night. So this again is what we're rigging and you can kind of see here. And you can kind of see how crispy this tree is. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, let's see here. Gotta put my phone down, guys. So I'm gonna zoom up here. Look at that. You see how crispy that thing is on the back there? At least that bark is anyway. So again, these ashes, once they go dead, they just are terrible. So anyways let me zoom it back in the right right way so this is what i use i have a secondary line that is what we do a dub is just a, my old climbing line it's only about 110 foot but i use it and i will use it as a secondary either tag line <clears throat> or i will use it as a um and that's spliced on both ends i spliced those years ago but i spliced one with a, a um sits there and all like you see this is for rigging guys so i don't worry about the um the um stitching there or the um, webbing or if I can ever get the word out, the um, whipping, that's what you call that. So the whipping is still fine. It hadn't moved at all. I doubt it ever will. Um, this used to be my spider leg device. I had another piece spliced on here, guys. I had spliced one on, but I was being dumb and moved my, I was moving my brother in the car and man, I messed up the other end of it, but I had an orange rope on here about the same length. I spliced them up real nice, double spliced on both sides, but this been, so now this is basically a rigging ring, one of the large ones. And I just kind of use it. I can use it uh, for the, like if I need the extension on the device or a pulley, or I can dub it as. Uh, sometimes I can even use it in the tree as a secondary, um, almost like even like a, a ring to ring type situation as a as a as an extended version of a cambian saber. So you know it's many you know again many uses, but I hardly ever use this thing as far as if it ain't rigging or setting up something to the tree as far as with a pulley device or something along those lines. So let me put this inside here. So. Guys, that's pretty much the common setup and some of some of the rigging setup. And so I'll get over here and I'll show you some more stuff. So I'm just gonna walk this over here because I got a bunch of All right, so I'm getting this out the way now because I don't need this anymore. So I'm set up now to climb. I'm just waiting on my guy to get here because I want to tell him I'm gonna have to tell him my price on this because I'm not gonna do this. This is a really touchy one. And we normally I work out something for him because he's a good friend, but hey, we're gonna see today. He's want me to climb this thing. If not, I'll just pack up and go home. But I've just been using the Echo CS um, Force 4 and something. Yeah, 590, which is about 60, 70, well, what is it, 60 cc's? Yeah, 59.8, so a 60 cc. I really love that for like a round saw and a, and a light climbing saw, especially like when you're cutting the chunks down. I mean, really nice little saw to have. I mean, nothing, you know, huge, but course i'm using this latest biggest baddest the t5 um i can't even remember it's 540 i l i or something like that oh yeah 540 i so y'all know i'm not lying there we go so 
I had this since they came out. I was probably one of the first people that didn't like get approved for a demo or didn't, um, if you look at the timestamp on my videos or, or, or you know, cause they, a, lot, a lot of guys got deals with Husky and I don't have no kind of branding rights or anything with them as far as what I show you guys. But I actually was one of the first guys that had this all so that bought from a dealer cause they made a mistake and sent this to the dealer down in King. And I gotta give them a shout out here while I'm in the video, LTD Farm and Garden right there, down in King. Um, these guys are the best clay back in the um, parts department. I think his family owns a store, but real good people. Um, and what I normally do guys, I keep my hand truck. I got buckets and stuff so I can put everything you see here. I can put in a, um, in a situation to where I'm bagged. I can bag it all up, bucket it up and even all that stuff over there and just hand truck it to the site. And that's what I pretty much do. So I got a little bit of, you know, I got some more throw rope here. And I got throw bags, I got tools, and I got just little miscellaneous stuff, you know, chains and whatever I need an extra hand saw, you know. I got stuff like that, you know, just sitting around. I got almost all kinds of these old yell cordage. This is old tow line. I got bunches of just random, just random rope and beaners and snaps. And this is like a breakaway deal. So I could just snatch this. Like if I wanted to have something in the tree to where I wanted to break away laying it almost on a roof or something or on a bucket. I just what and I just kept these, but I can cut this off and kind of give me a little, you know, a little absorbing, even though, you know, this is about six foot length. So, you know, just to have some extra stuff. But I got random junk everywhere. Um I bought this. This is 175 foot. Now this is the same line um that's in the that's over there on the tree, the orange that you can kind of see from a distance. But it's it's the XTC. This is considered the blaze or something like that. I can never remember this stuff because guys I I buy a lot of junk, but it's brand new hardly. I mean, the guy used it. You could see it was sitting in his bucket truck when I bought it off of eBay. He barely even used it. Um, and so I dubbed this as an extra climbing line or rigging line, but it's um, 175 right here. And um, I got a um, throw rope right here. That I, I mean, um, uh, um, what's up, bro? And then I have a um, another, um, man, I can't, out of eye splice on eye splice that I'll use to you know, do whatever I need to do um, when it comes time for using that. So I'll set that up on that system. So new rope, new new splicing device. But here's some sweet stuff now. Of course, guys, I still have the trusty, dusty three-strand Samson rope, which is, you can't get away with not having that. I got the CMI block, guys, which is, which is the, um, okay, which is the, again, the, and the best thing you can get when you, especially entry level. I still got my, um, um, loopy slings um, that Ralph B made me. I got two versions of them that he made me, along with actually another lanyard that I think I keep in either here or there. I can't remember where, but he made this little small one for me too. But this guy's is a man. I, I was covered in this thing. I got such a great deal on that. That was a seven. I mean, by time taxes and everything, that's a seven hundred dollar pulley. It's a big boy, the DMM. A lot of guys never even seen this thing, you know, at least up close. You see it in the magazines, but it, it was brand new. I just got probably used it two or three jobs. I mean, I didn't really even need it. It was overkill, but I just always covered that thing. But I finally got it. I probably paid about, guys, you're going to be crazy, about $350. I want to say $350. And um, more um, slings and stuff to get set up. And, of course, more rope. This is more three-strand. And, and what I found, guys, I'm starting to use is, you know, I'm not rigging a whole lot of big, big, big stuff here in North Carolina where I'm at. For Winston Salem, Kernsville, Greensboro, and I got ropes for that, and I got buddies with extra stuff if I have to have some, or I could just buy it. But I've just switched over from I start using more of a half inch, which is what this is, and also what the orange rope is, which is basically like climbing line to rig stuff down because it's just so much easier, it's lighter. You know, I'm getting older, got time to carry all this mess around. But here's the the coup de gras, and this is what I use my um I use my um this is my tree pulling kit. And again, this is spliced up. Um, um, this is again, Yale Poison Ivy, um, which is a double braid, which I love. And I spliced it in some GM um, pulleys, um, double sheave or whatever you want to call them. Real, this is a cheap version. You can get them online, two, two pack for almost $70. Probably by the time taxes hit. Of course, I got another grilling setup on here. So this is a really mechanical setup. All you do is extend it out and pull it in and then extend it back in when you get to this point. And then I use another loopy sling that I spliced up years ago that's big enough to go around the tree. And what that does there, guys, it goes around the tree and I can use either side. I got a big loop or a small loop. 
use either one to hook around, say maybe the base of a tree and I have a little distance, but that's how that works, guys. So that's pretty much my setup, guys. I wanted to show you that, and this is what I use when I climb. And also, so you can see it's me, just wanted to say what's up, and thank you so much for, like I said, just watching my videos and everything. Hopefully 2023 will be better about me posting videos, trying to get back into the swing of things because I've just been crazy taking care of the family. You know, it's just, it's always something going on in life. So you know what it is. And then I have my Petzl um, Vortex that I use. I'm gonna do a review on that that they gave me. Cause I always shout out Petzl, cause Petzl looked out for me. I appreciate you guys, Sam, and everybody down there at Petzl USA. Um, I just got sick and all that. I'll, I'll explain all that stuff later on, but I use a cost now too when I'm on jobs, especially cause I just like the idea of just doing that, that cause the eyeglass, especially out here in the cold, I don't have the visor set up for that one, um, that other helmet, so I use this one because it's easier just to do that, you know what I'm saying? So I do that and I'll just be done with it. And so I don't have to wear a lot of eye protection um, because again, it fogs up so bad. So the cost is really cool. And I got a really good deal on this. So I paid about $80 for it online, which you man is a steal. You can't beat that with a stick, but that's pretty much it guys. So yo, what's up guys? I'm gonna back this camera up a little bit. Now I'm gonna show you a case in point. All right, you see, I'm up here in the ash. I'm over this deck and everything. You see all that? It's a little further away than it actually is, but give or take, I'm up here about close to 30-something foot, you know? But um, see how I natural caught my rigging line, got the half inch, and you can see my climbing line is over here, kind of tucked over there, but I got my climbing line behind this leader right here. It's a three-liter ash, you know? And so I got my climbing line behind there. And so what I have to do sometimes, and I'm out here on this one, and you see, I'm kind of in an awkward position. You know, you kind of see a little bit. I know it looks crazy, but case in point with the grilling device and why I like this and I dub it as my extra lane. You can see I got a bunch of tail of it left here. Let me see if I can pull the rest out. Um, there we go. So like I said, that's why I keep it about 20 something foot. So you can see it's still a lot left. But what that dubs, see, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really almost where my climbing line is when you look at where I'm at right here. But what I tend to do is I'll use this. I'll cut slack out of my climbing line, but I'm still tied in over there. And then I'll use this as my climbing line and I'll shimmy up here and it'll be just like if as if I'm tied in over there. So that's how that works there, guys. So I will um, just wanted to show you that. So that's why I keep the lanyards long. And even if I want to tie in way over there and be cutting over here, my lanyard reach over there and it can hold me steady if I need to steady myself this or that way. So just wanted to show you that. But that's why I keep that long lanyard. And then I'm still tied in with my regular lanyard here on the trunk. So I'm and I don't like the idea of just just falling and falling all over the place. So I like sometimes I'll tie in three times. So that's just me. Some guys don't worry about that, but that's me. But that's just my mind it helps me to keep my mind easy. But you can see. This ash tree is a little, it's a crispy, but it's still got a little life left in it. So we're getting it at the right time, I hope. Hopefully nothing crazy happens when we're getting this wood down and everything. But only time will tell, guys. So peace out. You're on me, True Wife for Life. There you have it. Okay, now we're back to this, guys. I hope you like the, um tree in the deck that was another ash tree that was actually in the backyard so I, I so it did take two days um total as far as getting trees down and i want to say this one this job right here which is the one that you know and sorry for the fast pace i hope nobody gets too dizzy i just had to fast forward because just me cutting up stuff ain't no use in you watching me just cut all that up for 30 minutes you know uh but anyways so this was the final um, two trees of, of this job, me helping James here. So it worked out pretty good. Got everything cut up and loaded up on the trailer. Got out here kind of late again on this job too because of course the, the head cam will die out. I don't think I had charged it from the day before so it, I only was able to get a little bit of footage. Yeah, just a little bit of footage. Just take it, you know. Even though I don't want to sometimes, I just say, shut up. Don't make no sudden moves or, do, you know, throw your hands up sometimes. I just say whatever. <laughs> nah, I'd be more concerned down here. You closer. You, y'all people, I mean, y'all got bigger hoods than we do. It's bad everywhere, though, man. It don't matter. Yeah, it is. It don't matter where you are. I got people. You just don't know what type of mood 
Yeah. If a joker's in there swerving in and out of lane, obviously you got something going on where he's taking it serious. Right. And you know, he got a crazy thing too, like, um, I'm trying to say, um, oh, I hate to hear people, and you know, they always say, you know, this has never happened. This has never happened in my neighborhood. This stuff like this don't happen here around here. Yeah. And I'm thinking, man, what kind of world you been living in? Like, like, like they neighborhood got a force like a force shield around. I know. I'm like, guys, we are in the whole, this whole world we live in is sick and twisted. This whole entire. Yep. It hadn't came your way yet. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, it's bad everywhere. How you doing today? Good. Doing fine. And then we'll be in the game. That way you want when you clean it, you know they have a way to get to their driveway. Woo! Hey guys, I don't know about you guys, but I love these battery powered um, tools now. Now granted, some of them, because if you get the lower grade battery, they won't seem as good. But when you get a higher class battery, now this is a mid grade battery for the um, blower that I'm using. This is a Cobalt series um, backpack blower, which I think I paid like 125 off of Facebook Marketplace. Um, you know how you find great deals with Facebook and Craigslist. Facebook more than ever now. It used to be Craigslist for me. I used to get all kinds of stuff. But let me know if you guys have any of this battery power stuff and what you think of it. Um, this thing is great. I mean, of course, the battery don't last long on it, but I'm able to, you know, I can still function, you know, instead of having to pull, do the pull cord and, this, and the fumes. I mean, it's just so much easier to deal with this, um, this blower. But it does take forever to charge. Um, outside of that, in the time, of course, I got, I think, what is it, 4.5 or 6 amp? I can't remember what it is. 4 amp, I can't remember all the amperage. But uh, again, a nice little situation there. But here, all I'm doing is just getting it to where, because James is going to be the one to finish this up. He's probably just going to get a load and take it to the dump. I forget what time of day it is here. It looks later than it is because it's just a, a dreary day. but just trying to get the people's um, driveway clear for them, as you heard me say before. That's what we try to do, you know, try to be functional. or have a functional work site, you know, everybody working together, work with the homeowner, because we never know when they're coming home. They wasn't at home this particular time, but they could have, I guess by this time of the day, they're probably on their way back home, so we just have to make sure they get in, make sure the road is clean, and make sure the situation is really nice. I'm really, um, I'm, uh, what's the word, I want to say, I'm, I'm, Things like this is very tedious for me because I want to say another word, but I don't want to say that. that. That sounds a little too crazy, but I'm just a little obsessed about cleaning. Okay, that's just another better way to say I was going to say something else, but that would have been a great choice of words. But anyway, I am obsessed, so I try to, like, it's like no leaf left behind if I'm doing leaves, no stick left behind if I'm cleaning up, because I think that's the high mark of a good tree service, because I've seen guys leave some stuff and they. And it's crazy because I say to myself, the homeowner will even sometimes say, you can leave it, don't, but I, I just, I'm like this. I don't want to leave your yard raggedy because everybody's seen me here working. And if they put two and two together, your yard's raggedy and I just left it like that. Do I want this, this mess basically for my yard if he comes and does a job for me? So I think about it from that perspective. So I try my best to do a great job all the time. And occasionally, I, you know, like I said, you, you ain't always going to be able to do Great, great job. And again, sometimes I've actually, some of my customers have forced me out of the yard practically because they, they didn't want me cleaning up. They said they'd do it, so I'll stop then. But uh, but most times I tell my guys, I say, you you know, we worked a whole lot, you know, get the trees loaded up and trees down and hauled off or whatever to the dump or whatever. But I said, we're going to have to shine on this cleanup job. I need y'all to show up for me. 
I know this is the last leg of the journey, but I need you to show up because this is this is what's going to put the seal on the deal right here. Once we do the work and make it look really professional and clean. But anyways, guys, getting back to the um, highlights of the other job. Yo, what's up, guys? You want me to meet you for life? I just wanted to show you how crispy this ash tree was. You can see it's crispy, crispy, crispy. We got the top of it out. We got to get the wood and get the limbs. Let's see. There's shrapnel everywhere. That's the way out up to the front of the house. Just all straight manpower by hand. But everything looks good right there. And then you can see I got it wooded out now. Uh, I should have shot it with my um, range finder to show you how high this thing was. But let me walk up here on this deck to show you. Of course, the, the battle's not over yet. The battle is not over. It's just starting. This is the really the when you square rigging this chunky stuff down. That's when the that's when it gets fun. But you can see here, man, it's a two tier deck. And it's a crispy deck too, because this deck, I mean, it's painted, but it, you can see it's dry. I mean, we didn't do that, but it, it's just stuff everywhere. And then up here, I got my battery charging. I gotta charge it up and I'll get up there and finish up. I'm gonna sharpen my saw in the meantime, but that's what it is, guys. But it didn't take much. I mean, all I used, um, of course, my climbing line, my two lanyards. I used the one orange rope there. I had a tag line that's out there. I used that in the limb that was over the house here. And then, other than that, the CMI block up top, I used to use the zinc plated. I didn't use the big boy. But I'll probably get the big boy prepped so we can get some of this bigger wood down. So I'll, I'll put that up. But yeah, so I ended up, um, you know, that's what I ended up doing. But, anyways, you're on with me, you for life. Camera,